Daniel Lakers, and welcome to Book 101. Book 101 is all about the books that I read for the last 40 years, and today I have my special guest, no other than Miss Jacqueline Watson. Hi, Danielle. How are you? I'm great, Miss Watson. How about you? I'm awesome. Thank you. That'd be fabulous. So let's talk about the latest book that you read and what is it? Yeah, it's called The Life-Changing Magic of Tithing by Murray Kondo. Okay. And what it's all about? It's about decluttering and organizing your home and your space. Not just your home. You can do it like whatever, right? But mm. really... She's she talks about decluttering your home and your space. Um, she actually talks her method is about keeping things that spark joy, um, you know, and you know, eliminating the rest, right? So, um, she's got a very, um, you know, a really nice personality, and she goes over things, uh, in a little bit of a a very organized method, you know? Yes. Um, so for example, she talks about, you know, start with easy items, easy to let go items. And then she also talks about, you know, like, so if you're, if you're starting with easy to let go items, like start with all of the same items, like categories. So for example, start with clothes or start yeah. with kitchen or start, like start with not look not a location, sorry, but just with items, right? Like if you're doing books, just go with books, clothes. But she says, you know, you have to go in a, some sort of order, um, just to make it easier. Yes. And um, and she she also talks about you know her famous Corn Marie method, which is you know keeping items that spark joy, and letting go of items that don't make you happy. Oh, that sounds fabulous. Yeah, it does. So this book is uh, in line with your business, right? Kind of, because it does help, um, you know, with organizing and decluttering. And, you know, I actually help uh, clients um, in that field as well, right? Like when yeah. we are like listing homes, sometimes I, I get clients who have, who have been in a home for a very long time. And, um, you know, they've, they've collected so many items, right? It's kids' items that kids keep there, and, you know? And then they decide they want to, you know, they're getting into the retirement uh, lifestyle. They want to downsize or uh, move to a condo, move to a, you know, retirement and uh, community. But then those, you know, when you're downsizing, you know, you sometimes can go from a three bedroom house or four bedroom house to like a one bedroom, you know, uh, it's quite a lot. It's quite a big uh, um, task. And so this helps because her method, like she's, she, from, if you actually read her book and she actually had a TV show a while back. And if, if someone's actually read the book and watched the TV show, you'll see like, she's got a very calm demeanor, very like, you know, her method is very like thoughtful. It's mm. about, you know, thanking the clothes that gave you joy and like that you need to move on and give it to someone else or, but also just keeping what is essential and what makes you happy as opposed to, you know, those things that don't make you happy. Right. So, sure. yeah. That, nice. Yes. So they think that tidying up and downsizing are the same method. Well, I think decluttering, yes. um, so tidying up is tidying up, right? Decluttering yeah. is really kind of where it comes down to. It's, it's re really getting rid of the clutter that you have. And, you know, just because you put it in a closet doesn't mean you got rid of the clutter. You just moved it somewhere <laughs> else, right? <laughs> yes, yes. You know, anytime Be I walk in, I don't have like tidy, tidy closets. But, you know, <laughs> some people are very organized and that works sure. for them. But some, you know, this, um, this book is really good if you're like looking to actually um, start to declutter like your home and you want to get like a little bit of, you know, you because it can get overwhelming. Sometimes people like you look at one thing and then you're like, 
oh my goodness, like this is so much, right? But it's about like bite-sized pieces, you know, taking smaller portions, working on that for a bit, taking a break, coming back to it. Like, you know, um, but but once you declutter and you get rid of stuff, you'll actually feel much better. True, true. Because nowadays people, uh, it's hard to let it go, right? Especially, oh, there's a sentimental value for this. Oh, I want to keep this. I want to keep that. Right? I think we, we work in a society, we live in a society where people just buy and buy and buy. Mm. And, you know, sometimes, you know, I mean, I'm guilty of that too, right? I mean, I'm, trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to pay more attention to it. I'm trying not to, um, you know, buy just to buy. There are times where, like in the past, you know, you'll still find, you know, price tags on my clothes, right? <laughs> because I haven't even worn them. I think they're yeah. still sitting there. So, you know, I'm trying to pay more attention to that. But this book was a really good insight to, you know, yeah, to to just getting just decluttering, organizing how to help other people do it as well. Right. Yes. So let's give a little background for Marie Kondo. It says Mm -hmm. that Marie Kondo, born October 9, 1984, also known as Con Marie is a Japanese organizing consultant and author and TV presenter. Oh, she's an interesting woman. She is, she is. So do you recommend this book? If you want to rate one to 10. I would give it a a nine, I would give it a nine. I would definitely recommend um, this book for anyone who's looking to, um, even if you're not looking to declutter, I think it's a good read. because it will come of use. It's one of those books that I think at any time of your life, you can reread it and yeah. you'll still find something interesting that you, you know, to do. Okay, Miss Watson, give one highlight of this book that uh, you can share to our listeners. Well, the one highlight that I, I probably already shared already was, um, you know, her three step, like she talks about, you know, um, you know, start with easy to let go items, like, you know, items that you can, you know, easily let go. Yes. Um, you know, and, and she also talks about just um, doing items at a time. So first doing clothes, then doing books, then doing whatever, like in categories, um, yeah. you know, not doing like a few clothes and a few books and a few whatever. Finish one, like, a product, like, before you move to the next one. And she also talks about, um, you know, like gather all the stuff in one place. So you get to see the whole pile of what you have, right? Yes. Um, and then she says, keep what sparks joy. And um, and that's kind of interesting because I think it's a very Japanese, yeah, I think we we all have a different way like she says keep what sparks joy but I think it's just what makes you happy and what you'll feel happy wearing or uh, what you won't feel so happy get rid of you know definitely that's true so Miss Watson recommended the book uh, it's called The Life-Changing Magic of Tiding by Marie Kondo it's highly recommended to read do you like it share it and definitely Nine. Okay, Miss Watson, let's talk about housing market in Canada. What well, tell us about the latest news? Oh well, the housing market continues. I mean, there's still uh, a shortage of homes, and while the market is a little slow, not I wouldn't say slower, but maybe a little quieter, should we say? Mm, yes. Um, you know, when people are kind of fence sitting a little bit, there's yes. still a great demand for homes, and um. You know, I think everybody's patiently waiting for um, everybody's patiently waiting for the next interest rate hike, which will be October 26th. But again, (laughs) yeah, yeah. And then probably this one will be the last for this year. But really, you know, the numbers are the numbers, right? You're either going to pay on a rate or you're going to pay on the price of a house. And right now, um, Houses are not like, you know, uh, selling in one hour or two hours or a day. You know what I mean? They're like staying on the market a bit longer. 
So yes. it gives people an opportunity to really kind of take a look. And there's a deal to be had, right? Like, uh, you know, we say to people, if you're a first time home buyer, if you can get into the market, it is a great time to get into the market. You know, everyone's thinking, you know, interest rates are going to drop. They're never going to drop to um, the low interest rates we've had for the last quite a long time. But what, what people have to understand, too, is that even if they drop, interest rates are not the end all, right? It's not the final product. Interest rates can be, you can refinance um, yeah. and, and get a lower rate if the rates were to drop. But the price of the house is really kind of key, right? Because if rates were really low, in, the prices of houses would still be quite high. And right now, yeah. it's a good time to get a good deal. Um, and, you know, at any point, you can refinance that interest rate. But it helps you get into the market because the rents are just skyrocketing. The rents are, like, totally out of control. You see double now, Ms. Comparing the rent five years ago oh, from yeah. now, what 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 are the changes? The rents, while you know there are some uh, rent controls in in Ontario as such. Um, mm. Having said that, the fair market value of rents have so skyrocketed. Like I mean, you know you you know if you think you you know when someone calls me and says. Well, I have twelve hundred, thirteen hundred to spend on a rent, and I'm like, and I want to rent a home or I want to rent a condo. I I can I have to tell them I'm sorry. Like I think like you can't even find it. Um, oddly enough, you know, there's a lot of students that are coming back into Canada. There's a lot of immigration, and you know, immigrants are are such that immigrants will buy homes because that's kind of their dream, right? Yes. Uh, they come here, they save all they can and they they'll buy a little home even if it's a small little home um and students on the other hand are coming and they're needing places to rent and you know very rarely are you finding even like um a one room with a shared bathroom and shared kitchen yes um i actually uh, had a client who was looking for uh, a space and there was this condo it was one room. It was like not even 10 by 10. It looked like a 10 by 9 or something, a small little room. It was a shared bathroom, shared kitchen because the owner lived there as well. And $1,500 oh my- a month. Now, that was all inclusive, but there are other places. Now, some other places are six, seven hundred, eight hundred dollars $800 for a room, mm-hmm. not, not a, a space that you can share, like not like your own apartment. It's a room with a shared bathroom, shared kitchen. You know, you're looking at anywhere under, you know, six to eight hundred dollars for that alone. So I mean, really, rents are on such a rise and such a trajectory that I don't even know how you know the average person with a couple of kids can you know find a decent place to live um, if they start to look right. Yes, that's true. So, Miss Watson, uh, what are the top five factors that nowadays why people considering to buy a house? Well, there's a couple of different topics, right? There's there's the inflation. Yes. And so people get worried when there's inflation, there might be loss of jobs. But we also have very little. Um, we have a lot of openings. Like there's a lot of job vacancies too, because a lot of you know with the pandemic, a lot of the um, um, the older generation that could retire actually decided to retire. Um, so, uh, so the inflation is key. Well, this war in Ukraine is also causing, you know, some additional, uh, um, you know, disturbances. Uh, yeah. You know, because I think everybody expected that to end a lot sooner The interest rates, of course, the interest rates are playing a big part because people are now being able to afford less, right? Um, So there's all of those factors than the rising rents. But um, I think people are just afraid and sitting on the sidelines. But, um, you know, I I keep saying this and people, you know, are looking at me going, hey, you know, prices are going to drop. But, you know, all of the studies are saying that prices will not, like, it will not bottom out, you know, yeah, you'll have a little bit of a a decline, 1% here, 2% there, 4%, you know, but 
the the rates the prices are still higher like a year ago the prices are still higher 4% from last october you know when something percent so it's not like the prices like you know i think you have to kind of weigh apples to apples right and try to figure out last year october this year october what was the price what's what, what's that price look like you know so i think we needed to have a little bit of a cooling only because i think the market was just getting too crazy but once once i think you know this next hike goes up i think a lot of people will uh, start to re look at where they are again because it doesn't make sense to uh, sit on the sidelines anymore um, and we're going to go back to the same market because we're co- going to cause the same frenzy because what's going to happen is all these people will start looking again but to drive the prices up like they were doing before true so what do you think how many a uh, month or year the cooling will stabilize well I think i think the demand is pretty high yes so the way you know i mean you know i don't have a crystal ball and i'm just you know based on what i'm reading with other experts that talk about all these factors at play but human behavior is human behavior right like if they don't change their behavior and decide to buy then the market would remain but for some reason people think that the market is going to just you know drop to exceedingly low prices and that's where they're going to buy and that's not going to happen right I, yeah so as as you said that people need shelter just like mm-hmm. food yeah so, all immigrant coming in canada so they need shelter they need food so we need uh, we need houses yeah you know the three important uh, factors like you mentioned food shelter yeah. and garbage those are the three you can get rid of yes <laughs> true those are the money makers you know what okay. i mean <laughs> true so miss watson again what is your advice for those people want to uh, buy and to sell their house so i i i would say um a cookie cutter answer is not you know something i would advise on right i think your whatever your story is i think you need to figure out what is going to work for you right so if if for example you're a first time home buyer we'd have to take a look to see where do you fall where do you get into the market how you work on that piece if you're a, a move up buyer if you're uh, you know um maybe not uh let's say you're maybe 10 15 years 10 years away from retirement age or 5 years away from retirement age i mean i wouldn't tell you to go crazy and buy this big house on the block right um, yes it depends on what what you're looking to do with your life and where you want to see yourself go um but um if you're i mean if you buy at a lower price you're also going to sell at a low price it's kind of goes hand in hand you sell at one price and you buy at this you know the same sort of market um and that's what people are not understanding they want to time the market they think well i'm i want to sell when i'm you know when my my price is extremely high and i want to buy when it's extremely low no. or what do you do in the meantime where do you live right yes so i would say the best way to deal with this is to have actually um a good um a realtor that will sit with you and kind of understand what you're um trying to achieve and you know if you own a house you know what the value of that property is and yes. you know how to make those numbers work for you right and once you do that then you can decide what you really want to do um and maybe you know once you have that meeting it may be like hey maybe it's best to stay in your house for a couple of years that might be the advice you know uh yeah so it, it really i i would say it's it's a consultation or a call or a chat whatever you want to call it a fireside chat whatever you want to call it it's a chat it's like just trying to figure out um yeah. you know what next steps would work best for you uh find a good realtor like miss watson <laughs> <laughs> thank you So uh, what is your encouragement for those people first time home buyer? So I mean I've 
uh, I do a lot of work with West Side Home Buyers and, and that actually brings me the most, you know, brings me the most joy, let's just say, because, uh, you know, I, I, I love it because the clients that work with me will come back and work with me again, repeat it. And, you know, that makes me very happy because, you know, means that I'm doing a good job for them. I am, I do personalize, I do take uh, good care of them, you know, because I do not want them to have a bad experience and I want them to get, you know, good service, good customer service, right? And um, because these people end up being my friends, you know, they end up, you know, really, um, you don't fall off my radar, you know? Yes. (laughs) And um, so, and they're your biggest advocates. And and really what I would say is don't give up hope. If you're looking to buy um, and you're not quite ready, like I did a consultation the other day with, with a client who, who actually referred me a friend of theirs and they were not ready to buy just yet, but we put a plan into place as to how to get them to the next step, right? So yes. if it's not today, don't be disappointed. It'll be, you know, there'll just be a few months delay. You just, you know, we just have to work on a plan to get you there. That's all. Yes. Patient is virtue, as they yeah, say. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so where do people uh, reach you, Ms. Watson? Yeah, you can reach me on uh, LinkedIn at Jacqueline Watson. Um, and or you can reach me on Instagram at jwatsonhomes or on my website at jacquelinewatson.ca. And congratulations for your new podcast. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, more power. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. It's actually so, just to grow businesses. Yes. Can, can you promote your podcast over here? If you want oh, to. yeah, absolutely. So it's uh, called Elementary. And um, it's uh, so what it is, is, is I do um, interviews with uh, business owners that own businesses. Um, some of them are small businesses. Some of them are a little larger. But a lot of times there are, are smaller businesses. Um, some are predominantly women. And so I try and promote them the best way I can. Um, and so we do an Instagram live. So the podcast is actually a live, like no different than you and yours and mine. It's mm-hmm. a live recording and it's, it's, I do it on Instagram live. So they have to, show, they have to come on Instagram live and then that's how we do the podcast and promote businesses. So, um, you know, last week was cleaning company. The week before was, a photographer. I did, uh, uh, you know, a branding photographer. I did, uh, you know, I do my mortgage uh, person. I done a staging uh, lady. So it's pretty cool. It's uh, it's uh, definitely a great podcast if you want to. Um, yes, check it out. But elementary by Miss Watson. A shout out for the people listening in Morocco. We are oh. at number 40, Ms. Watson. Wow. Yes, and India, we are number 45. Thank you so much. Okay. And Italy, we are at number 49. Thank you for supporting this podcast. I will promise you, Ms. Watson and I talk about books and, of course, Canadian market housing market (laughs) so exciting (laughs) we want to inform you about what's happening in canada in terms of housing news thank you ms watson thank you so much have a nice day more to come people see you soon